In this video, we'll introduce a model of international conflict based on the works of Lewis Fry Richardson, a pioneer in the field. Suppose that we have two nations. These nations are antagonistic, but not in a state of war with one another. We're going to try to decide whether the nations will go to war. We should say from the outset that neither Richardson nor I believe in any sort of mathematical determinism when it comes to human affairs. Nations that this model calls on to go to war can make the decision not to. However, it makes sense to use a mechanical mathematical model to investigate the build up to war because, quoting Richardson, nations follow their traditions, which are fixtures, and their instincts, which are mechanical. And because they have not yet made a sufficiently strenuous intellectual and moral effort to control the situation. The process described by the equations is not to be thought of as inevitable. It is what would occur if instinct and tradition were allowed to act uncontrolled. In this video, we'll set up and explain the equations. Suppose we have two nations, X and Y. We'll let X of T and Y of T be the war potential. of these nations. For simplicity, let's call this the amount of money they spend on their military. The nations are in a state of conflict which has not escalated to actual warfare. Let's build dx dt. There will be a ky term. If nation y is building up its military, if y is large, the nation X will quickly build up its own military. There will be a limiting term, negative alpha X. There's only so much money that nation X can devote to building up its military, no matter what nation Y is doing. So if nation X's military spending is already large, it will grow slowly. But there will also be what we call a grievance term, G. So far, the only positive term we have here is a response term. Nation X will build up its military, but only in response to nation Y. But we're assuming that these nations are hostile and perhaps on the brink of war. In that situation, 
Nation X will build up its military no matter what it sees Nation Y doing. That's represented by this G. The other equation will be parallel. dy dt equals lx minus beta y plus h. We're assuming these grievance terms are constant, which is both accurate and inaccurate. In the real world, grievance tends to be a piecewise constant. Two nations have whatever levels of grievance they have with one another, and then something happens and the grievance jumps discontinuously. As an example, you could look at America's relationship to China. The grievance term was going along steadily, but then the COVID-19 outbreak happened, America scapegoated China, and our relationship abruptly worsened. We saw the same thing on the other side of the political fence last presidential election, with Russia. Note that these equations are not homogeneous because of these grievance terms. There are a few ways we can deal with that, which we'll discuss shortly. In this video, we introduced a model of conflict Although obviously rather simple, this model can be used to model a variety of philosophies of war. So over 2,000 years ago, Thucydides claimed that the Peloponnesian War was caused by the growth of armaments. That is, he blamed this KY and LX terms. About a hundred years later, Sir Edward Grey, the British Foreign Secretary during World War I, said the same thing. He claimed the arms race encoded in those terms caused the war. On the other hand, Ellis Amory of the British Parliament disagreed. He claimed that World War I happened because of a conflict of ambition and ideals. That is, he blamed the grievance terms G and H and described these terms, which Gray blamed the war on, as being merely symptoms. The power of this model is that we can use it no matter who is correct. 
fact. If you think the grievance terms are important and the growth of armaments isn't, make the grievance terms large and the armament terms small. If you think the growth of armaments are the deciding factor, you can make the grievance terms small or even zero.